slow. <clears throat> so this uh, video is going to be how to set up Ring Central with OBS uh, for YouTube streaming. Um, at the end, if there's anyone in chat, live chat, um, that have that has any questions, I'll go ahead and answer them. So basically what you're seeing right now is just me using OBS and streaming on YouTube live. And you can see me just uh, show the chat, a video. It's kind of a, a bottom line of what the topic is that hopefully I'll keep throughout. And then just kind of my main work area. Um, so all this is done through OBS. And all Ring Central is is just making sure that everything uh, if you're talking to other people or you want to set up some type of panel or an interview, you can use Ring Central meeting. Um, hi, Rob. Um, and this will just pretty much give you uh, how, to, how to do it, what you need. And at, uh, this will be, uh, I use a PC, not a Mac. So if you use a Mac, it might be slightly different. Um, I'm not going to go really in depth on all the settings and how to use OBS because you can go ahead and watch tons of good videos on YouTube already on how to do it. So first step, you will need to go and download and install OBS on your machine. And um, I'll, all the links are provided in the description box below and you can get it here just download the installer that's that's pretty much fine uh, so that's pretty easy one um, <clears throat> right now what I'm also using and it doesn't seem to be working there we go are hotkeys so to transition between uh, certain sources I just use hot hotkeys um, so what you'll need next is uh, to get your YouTube account to meet any requirements in order to live stream. It seems to fluctuate, but currently as of today, uh, you might need to have at least 10,000 views for your channel or have at least 100 subscribers. I'm not sure which, but if you don't have either of those, uh, I would go and see if you can live, click on the live stream. I'll show you how to do it and see if that works. And we'll do that now. So, <clears throat> You can see this is my YouTube. Uh, I'm logged in. If I go to my channel, you click on Video Manager, and you can see it goes through um, a whole bunch of additional settings, uh, Creator Studio that you can do. So if you click on Live Streaming, it, if you don't have enough, you may not be able to do it. And you can see just my settings. I don't do anything in particular. Um, you can see that my stream options, this is, I just keep it low latency, uh, no monetization. I think you need something like a thousand subscribers. I don't use cards, so I just basically use the basic info, uh, just my title, my description, my category. Uh, the most important thing you're going to need to know is to input, you don't really need to input your server URL because uh, OBS sets that up by default, but you do need your stream key. I'm not going to reveal it for you, but you would just copy and paste it later to your OBS. So that's how you get to your live stream. And you don't need to worry about launching your live stream from here. You're going to launch it through OBS. So I'll get to that in a bit. So let's see, going back. Um, three. So we went through two steps already. Uh, David Barr, no, I haven't used Uber Conference. Um, I'll be sure to look that up, see if that's anything like. Um, I don't even I haven't. I don't even know what it is. If it's free or if it costs something or what the limitations are. But thanks, David. Um, all right. So number three, uh, you'll need to get a Ring Central Premium account. And right, I just took a screenshot of the pricing and I put it here. What you need is the premium edition pricing because that allows up to 50 people to participate in the Ring Central meeting. If you get the, the lowest one, it's cheaper, but only four people can get in it. So if you want to have a, a larger audience to get together, just like I have on the Anything Goes or the uh, After Hours stuff, uh, then you'll want the premium. And that's different. So if you go month to month without a contract, it's $44.99. If you do a monthly contract, it's slightly cheaper, but basically if you want to end it 
uh, before the year's over, I think you end up paying probably some type of fee for can termination fee. And then you've got, um, I'm sorry, uh, so the annual price, if you pay all 12 up front, is 44.99, but you have to pay up all in front, I'm sorry. Um, and the monthly price, like I said, just said before, it's uh, monthly, but you're contracted through the year. And if you break the contract, you probably have a termination fee. And this is a monthly price with no contract. It's $54.99. So uh, if you know you're going to be doing it for a long time, yeah, go ahead and do the yearly subscription um, and pay just slightly cheaper. Um, let me get to show you the, the actual website. So here, if you go to the pricing plan, you can see that this is the standard edition, which which seems a lot cheaper. And um, see, this is why I hate about their their thing. Like it looks like thirty four ninety nine. Then why is it um, why does it cost fifty four dollars or fifty five dollars? Because when you actually look into the details, they'll tell you how much it costs. Th that's the details of how much it would cost at the cheapest uh, at, if there if you have twenty to ninety nine users. So it's basically a company you have 2099 users then it'll be like 3499 so it's pretty pricey on its own um, I guess I forgot it costs that much with in addition to tax so uh, the reason why as I mentioned before you want the premium rather than the standard is just this part um, right here because if you only if you're only gonna have four people per meeting then go and choose standard but if you're gonna have up to 50 uh, after hours anything goes it's usually been around uh, up to 14 I think and um, you're probably not going to have up to 50 people because it's hard to have a conversation with so many people but 14 is pretty decent and you can't have that if you use the standard edition alright so that's the ring central meeting part Uh, four, you'll need a decently powered computer with a solid graphics card depending on your starting resolution and frames per second and your output resolution and frames per second. So currently I'm using a computer that has an Intel i7 3930, oh, 3930K, not 3970K. Uh, I have it overclocked to 4.6 gigahertz, uh, 64 gigabytes memory on it and two GTX 1080s, that's not an SLI. I have two monitors. The main monitor that I use is 2560 by 1440. Um, and one that is my secondary monitor that's just up above. That's 2560 by 1600 resolution. Uh, my starting resolution on OBS when I start to do my, uh, when I feed everything in, it starts at 1440p and I downscale it to 1080p. Um, my computer is way overkill for this, so don't worry about it. I built this thing maybe uh six years ago i think so it's outdated but it's plenty fast um the uh the graphics cards are more recent i got it maybe a year ago or two i can't remember um but i also gave you uh give uh, pretty much my idea of what a min minimum requirement setup would need you would need in order for for you to do this so just any four core or quad core CPU and that's physical cores only so if it's Intel and i5 um, that only has four cores that doesn't have hyper threading pretty much uh, 16 gigabytes memory should be enough and um, like a graphics a single graphics card like a HD 7950 or R9 280X these are like old old graphics cards uh, probably about six years old I don't think you can probably even find them anymore except buying them used and if they are they're probably about 80 bucks or equivalent Nvidia GTX 750 so if you have something newer and faster than that I think you'll be set um, as long as you have a monitor that's 1980 by 10 1920 by 1080 so if you have one of my monitors that are really huge has a lot of resolution you might need a slightly beefier graphics card so with that set you also need a decent internet bandwidth depending on your output of your video quality you can test your current upload and download speeds at speedtest.net and I give an example of what my oops, not that sorry uh, speed tests are for example so I'm um, 
this was done before I started the stream. It's 136 megabits per second and my upload speed is 18.4 megabits per second. So as you can see, when you want to view my live streams at the highest quality, you'll see it's at 1080p at 60 frames per second. You don't need to do it that great. It's We're not doing anything but talking. So even if you wanted it at 720p uh, uh, at 30 frames per second, it's, it's it'll still look good. Um, some things to mention uh, about YouTube. Um, it tells you kind of what you need uh, and some restrictions um, of YouTube and their community guideline strike or if you're blocked globally, uh, if you have copyright strike um, or takedown. Um, and one thing is there's copyright issues. So if you're using Hangouts on Air, uh, you might have a copyright strike, uh, so they might not even air it. But so far, it works fine for a Ring Central meeting, even though it is third-party application. Um, we'll get more to uh, how what requirements, uh, bandwidth requirements are for streaming live video. The cast does a pretty decent job of kind of giving you a, a layout of of what it is, and. Uh, shoot. Come on, what's going on here? I think I minimized it. Wow, that's... Oh, okay, so I was going to get to that in a bit. Uh, hey, Jeremy, hey, Zox. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I have pretty fast speeds. Um, I go through uh, RCN and not Comcast, which is nice because... Um, the only times I seem to have issues with my speed is if they change something else, either through Comcast or Ring Central, because I, we end up having um, college kids come through here, and then they'll get their internet set up, and then sometimes they mess with mine, and I have to call up. But that that, that hasn't happened for a couple years now. All right, so um, I kind of did a little bit of an estimate. So if you're going for what I'm doing, um, 1080p at 60 frames per second, then you need at least 16 megabits per second upload speeds. If you're going for 1080p at half that, 30 frames per second, then just half that, that's eight megabits per second. If you're going for 720p at 30 frames per second, then you'll want at least 3.6 megabits per second upload. Um, that's probably the highest quality you'll get. Um, for most people uh, because of the pricing uh, if you're a gamer I'm pretty sure you'll you're gonna be able to have that at least so finally the last thing is to configure everything in OBS ahead of time but before you um, when once you have that configured when you're ready to start your 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 stream with ring central meeting with everyone on it or people who are gonna join you want to join the Ring Central meeting before you launch OBS, then start streaming. Because if you launch OBS first, um, it, it cuts off any type of input stream going to OBS. So if you have a webcam, you'll notice that your webcam feed won't appear. So you want to make sure that before you start OBS, you start everything else that OBS is going to need, then you start OBS. It's just one of those things you'll, you'll notice once you start using it. And um, we're going to go straight to looking at OBS for a little bit. So um, right here is just another OBS session, so you don't have to see my current session. <clears throat> and how everything goes is you start off with scenes. So if you're not familiar with it, this is just a quick intro. You create a scene by clicking the push plus button, and then you just re you name it something, and then you add your sources. So your, my sources here is this is an image which is anything goes with Eric and then I have two in a bag just in case I'm hosting it or Stevie's hosting it um, I don't use the donate anymore so I'll just go ahead and remove that yes um, YouTube live stream chat this is this section in the right and all it is is I have um, you can handle uh, Zox, um, I'm going to need to concentrate on that question, so I'll try to answer it at the, after I go through this. Um, so, uh, the
this is my live stream chat. So it's zoomed in at 175 times. Uh, it's just my live streaming session on Chrome. And I just use uh, uh, just a, a darker um, template for um, for my YouTube. Uh, this Ring Central meeting is the Ring Central meeting that you would start. Um, but I'll, I'll just show you uh, the application, uh, what Ring Central looks like. And you can see this is just the Ring Central app. Um, all you do is just start one of one of these. I just start it with video, and then it opens up Ring Central, and then you just wait. Uh, you want to configure everything and crop everything and do things like that once Ring Central meeting started, but uh, you'll have to play around with it. I can go ahead and do a second tutorial on how to how to do uh, manipulate all the sources and do your transitions and your transforms. And how to order everything um, and use hotkeys to, to go from one section to the next. Um, so I'm gonna go and go to the settings. So uh, before I go to the settings, you'll see that I have desktop audio, mic auxiliary audio, um, those are my, my mic feeds, and desktop audio too. Uh, once I start up Ring Central, I think there's usually more. So um, this desktop audio is if I play back anything and I show it to you, you're going to be able to see it. Um, mic auxiliary uh, is what I actually used uh, for my mic. Um, I don't know which mic auxiliary to, that might just be my mic feed coming through Ring Central. Um, I forget. But it doesn't seem to affect my, my output audio, so I don't worry about it. Desktop audio 2 is from Ring Central meeting. So if I want to mute, You'll see that uh, before I leave, oh, uh, shoot, I did not want that, wrong one. Um, that's that's basically, um, if I mute my desktop audio and I, and I want to step away, uh, my audio from Ring Central will still pass through. So I can step out, cover my mic, uh, my webcam, and do stuff and everyone can just hear everyone else's voice and nothing that I do in the background. So some of the settings that I'll go over. So I press the hotkey, which my, mutes my audio, and I didn't get rid of it. But uh, so sorry, I should probably change the, my hotkeys. So that's the thing to <laughs> to make sure you don't mess up uh, having so many hotkeys, kind of doing everything. So, anyways, I'm just trying to set up uh, so you can see my settings. I was just saying that I hate doing these mistakes when everything is live. So here are my settings for OBS. Um, I didn't really mess with the advanced settings, so don't worry about that. Um, I use general, stream, output, audio, and video, and, and hotkeys. But I'm not going to go for hotkeys right now. So in general, um, I don't even think I even mess with anything in general. Maybe I changed the theme to a dark theme, but... Uh, don't worry about that. So your streaming services. Um, um, no Zox. I don't live near James, I think. Um, I'll get to you guys in a bit. All right, so streaming services. I'm using YouTube, YouTube Gaming. Uh, like I said before, um, uh, OBS has the default uh, service, so you don't have to enter in your... Um, server URL and then uh, the server just uh, I think it defaults to the YouTube primary ingest server and then I copy from my YouTube stream key to this and so when I start my stream it it will actually start it 
through going to my the YouTube service streaming service. Now in output mode, I, went, I switched it from simple to advanced. This is a streaming part. Uh, if you want to record, and I do too, just in case something happens to the stream, and um, I still have it recorded locally. But if you you could basically match the settings, streaming, record. Um, so my encoder, your encoder will be default to X two six four. But since I have an NVIDIA card, it has its own special encoder. So I keep it. I uh, use the NVIDIA encoder, which is slightly better. Uh, my output rescale output is 1920 by 1080, and you can set all that here. So ex for, so for example, base canvas resolution. My monitor that I use uh, typically is my main monitor, which is 2560 by 1440. But I don't need to show everyone that, you know, no one's going to watch it at 1440, and it takes a bit of uh, uh, bandwidth. So I just scale it down to 1080. But because I have the bandwidth to do it, I go ahead and do 60 frames per second because also my webcam allows up to 60 frames per second at 1080p. And I use bicubic uh, filter. I think uh, the default might be uh, bilinear. And so depending on whether you have a slower graphics card, you might want to keep it bilinear. If you have a more uh, powerful uh, graphics card. I could probably use this sharpened scaling with 32 samples, but I'm just using 16 samples. It's fine. I'm not doing anything really detailed uh, with anything, so uh, keep it at bicubic. So that's what it means when you go to this uh, output in the streaming section, the rescale output. I'm just keeping it at 1080 that I set up in the videos section. Uh, the rate control, CBR, bit rate 2500. I think uh, that's default set by just using a preset of high quality. That's all I use. You'll be fine. I can increase my bit rate uh, quite a bit, maybe up to 3,500, but it doesn't really matter to me. Uh, and audio, uh, I set my audio bit rate to 320. It's, it should be enough for everybody uh, to get good audio quality. And so uh, audio is the last step. Um, I have a sample rate of 41.1. I don't use the 48 kilohertz stereo. Um, just basically what I'm going using. I use my sound card. I also have uh, going through my dedicated um, audio. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, basically, this is where you connect all your inputs. So you can, you can control it and also use it for, um, goes through your OBS, through your live stream. Okay, and so that's it. Uh, maybe the last thing is this audio part. I kind of went over it, and um, that's where it ties up. When I went through that audio settings section, it adds it to this mixer, and you can change the mixer uh, around here. And what I do is I also add a couple of filters um, for noise suppression. Um, I don't. I just did it on my mic. As you can see, um, I created a noise suppression, uh, and my noise suppression level is negative 15. Otherwise, you kind of hear it buzzing. So if you have like your 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 uh, your mic next to your computer or a fan because it's loud, or you might have like a loud uh, AC unit, uh, and you can kind of hear the humming. You can use this noise suppression so the that lower frequency yet yeah, you won't be able to hear it. Uh, great. Okay. Um, so I think that's it. And if anyone has questions, uh, you can go ahead and ask me now. Um, Zox had a question. Does that mean with 16 you can handle 20 times the people at 1080p essentially? I don't know exactly what you mean by that, Zox. Um, was that the video part, like 16 megabytes of RAM? I know, I'm not sure what you meant. Um, 16 up. Oh, 16 meg. Oh, um, that might factor it because, like, when you host Ring Central, that's going to take up a little bit of bandwidth. So you might have to factor that in, and I think it. It, it the most you get is 720p 
So for example, when I host it, it's probably going to take up 3.6 uh, megabits per second upload speed for that. And so that leaves me around 15 megabits per second or less to actually output stream on YouTube. So yeah, um, you want to factor that in, but you can have as many people as you want on Ring Central because it goes through their servers and then they you get the downstream from it um, from them to what you see on the Ring Central meeting, if that makes sense. Um, let's see. Uh, let me know if that answered your question, Zox. Okay, next question. Hi, Eric. Uh, you're tired. Um, stay up until midnight. That's that's a rare occasion. Um, so when when I'm going back to um, here, uh, you can see that I kind of factored in how much you might need. Uh, because you might if when you're using ring central you might actually subtract that so you might actually need s about seven megabits per second upload speeds in order to host ring central and at 720p uh, at least that's just kind of an estimate you have a two terra two terra I don't know what two terra tower means two terabyte that's like hard drive hard disk space um, Play World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft doesn't take much to play. So, I don't know. You'd have to tell me what your graphics card is, James. Um, it's it's not very CPU intensive. For example, uh, OBS has uh, shows how much of your CPU uh, percentage is being used. I, I see it fluctuate from 5 to 5.5%, 5 .5%, so it's not utilizing very much. A lot of it's going to be... Uh, through your graphics card. Um, let's see. Can I? Sh I gotta launch it. All right. So I'm launching Afterburner. I'm gonna see how much utilization I'm actually using. Uh, you can't see it because I didn't configure it. Um, let's see. It's actually not using very much. So. Um. <laughs> yeah, socks. So, hopefully, uh, me and Bram have a uh, yeah. If you have a two terabyte uh, CPU, that would be uh, pretty amazing. Anyways, um, there's no other questions. I think that's it. If there's any anyone that wants to comment in the comment section. After this video is done, feel free to, and I can probably tackle those questions in the next video covering this. All right, thanks, and um, I think Eric or someone might be able to host Anything Goes tonight. So I'll see you guys later.